So it's Ding Zhongwei in a commanding position, but he still needs four more frames. The first to ten to be crowned champion here in Shanghai. £85,000 up for grabs. And actually, it's going to be Mark Selby to break off rather than Ding Zhongwei. Yeah, Ding, obviously, in the moment. <laughs> well, I think they all forgot, including Selby. So focused on the task ahead. Well, this man needs a fast start, of course, in this second session. It doesn't get better than this, Phil, does it? You know, you've got the local favourite in Ding Zhongwei, and you've got the world champion, world number one, battling it out once more in a major final. And it was a feature of Ding's play earlier on today. How attacking he was. He went for everything, and he got most of it. And indeed, Selby, before the interval was playing in much the same vein, and that's why it was a whirlwind session, just packed full of great snooker. Yeah, nine frames. I think the actual playing time was something like two and a half hours. Session two and three quarters, of course, you take uh, put in the, uh, the interval. But these two know each of these games inside out. Also forget, Phil, there's a possibility that you know, this match might no, not go beyond the interval. If Ding gets his uh, act together pretty quickly, I say he doesn't have to get it together, but you know what I mean, as regards getting off to a flyer. I'm sure it won't happen because Mark Selby's too good for that. Both players chasing their second titles of the season already. Of course, Ding recently won the Six Reds World Championship out in Bangkok. And Mark Selby claimed the Paul Hunter Classic. Yeah, just looking at the prize money list as well. If uh, Well, obviously, if Mark wins, he'll extend his lead at the top over Stuart Bingham. But if Ding wins today, he'll go from number eight to number six. It's actually the fourth final they've contested in all in those 21 previous meetings. Obviously, Selby winning the big one at the Crucible, but Ding has won the other two, including the Welsh Open a few years back. Well, Ding would certainly like to put one over on Mark on his home soil, wouldn't he? feature of Ding's play throughout the week. His safety has been outstanding. Yes, cleverly blocking that red that's on the left-hand side there with the yellow. I just wonder whether Mark's contemplating a pot here to the left corner. He's had a quick look at the black. He feels that, uh, no, he's, well, that's the one I'm thinking. Looking for the safety. Yes, earlier in the session, I think he might have gone for that red. Indeed, he was going for that kind of bot, but clearly there's a smaller margin for error now, trailing 6-3 in the final. Mark could have done with the cue ball tied to the cushion, and this is allowing Ding to get the white back into bulk here. Yeah, it was a good session, wasn't it? The first one, more of the same, please, gentlemen. Well, that's a mistake. The red has travelled rather further than anticipated so half a chance for Selby One. Selby going for his ninth ranking title in all Ding his 12th It'll be the first one for Ding if he does win since 2014. 
So he's due a big one. Yeah, not much in him. We're just look at some of the stats in that, weren't we? Early on, early on before we came on air, Phil, you know, talking about the centuries as well. There's not much in it there. You know, they've both made the century today already, and the ding's up to 420, and Mark's at 423. Four. Yes, I think it was just one between them at the start of the season. But it's the Englishman Five. who's got the early chance in this 10th frame. I did say he obviously needs to get off to a good start. If he can get the first couple of frames on the board, of course, it's, it's game on. But there's a danger that um, Ding could go off into the distance. One of the key moments of that first session was when Selby was 3-1 up and he had a difficult red, 12. which had he potted it, would have almost certainly resulted in a 4-1 scoreline. He missed it, didn't clear it up, and that really did change the momentum of the session. 13. Didn't want the cue ball there. Wanted to be much closer to the black. He, he can't do much with this. Nice well, downward strike and trying to apply a cannon into that red, I think. Land on the other one. Oh, that's well cued, but he's not found the positional side with the red. He's got one to the middle. It was awkward because the cue ball was too close to the cushion. Tant. Well, this is no gimme to the middle. No, and there's a bit of pressure on it too because he knows if he misses it, Ding could be back in. Well cued. 21. Landed on the left hand one, but he'll play this one just to get himself onto the black or the pink. Two great players here contesting this year's Shanghai Masters. Proven winners, of course. And both former winners of this tournament. There's pink coming to go behind its own spot. It was near as possible without touching the red. Thirty one. Thirty two. Oh, Mark can pop this red, uh, push the red out of the way. He can probably just come around it. I think it does go to the same left hand pocket, so just stun around it actually. He'll have an option of that one or the one to the middle. You can see that it does go. Plenty of room. Sitting nine. Great goes to 39, still two open reds. Forty. Well, he's got the loose red, but I just wonder whether he might just screw into them. He could arc the cue ball and catch the pink and really open them up. It'll be interesting to see how he plays this one. He's got to go into the pack at some stage. He's got the perfect angle here.
put the red on the way through, which took a little bit of the power out of the white. This one there, I think he's OK. Would have liked to them, uh, for them to have split a little bit more. He's got to be careful here that he doesn't push this. But he's got a slight angle and he can stun over. From there, it looks a little bit strange, actually. So if he's, if he's running this through, he's got to be very careful. This has to be a clean contact. Doesn't like it. If he can get this one right, it's a chance to win the frame. Well, it'd be much easier to screw the white back. It's a cleaner contact than it would be to try and run it through, because I say there's a possibility that this could be a push shot. He's running it through. Well played. It's nice and clean. And a great chance now for Selby to make the perfect start to this deciding session. Having been frozen out the back end of the first one. Fifty-five. Well, Mark's target here would be three-one at the interval. If he gets all four, that's a bonus. But two-two uh, two is no good to him. It's got to be three-one at least. That's a great shot. Back spin, side spin, perfectly played. This first frame of the second session then should be in the back. Red and the black would suffice to leave Ding requiring a snooker. But plenty of open reds, so you'd expect Selby to make a big break now. Possibly his second century of the final. Six to two. The crowd well aware of the significance of that black. Yeah. Six to nine. They've been great this week, haven't they? OK, they had the favourites, but they've been very, very fair with all of the players and very knowledgeable. Seventh. And they've generated a real buzz in this excellent arena, the grand stage in Shanghai. Well, the frame one. 75. Can he make the century? That would be a nice start. Great start to finish uh, to start this uh, second session. There was just that little tricky red in the middle of the pack there, Phil, wasn't it? Played that well, and the rest has been just well immaculate as usual. This is just what the doctor ordered for him. Always oh, missed that one. That's a pity. Mark Selby, seventy-six. In no the century then for Selby, but a statement of intent nonetheless. He got his chance and he took it with both hands. A one visit frame. He closes the gap to six four. From eleven. Think you're going to break. Things lead cut to two frames then. Six four. Selby with a run of seventy six in the first frame of the deciding session. To stop the rod. Ding having won five in a row. From three one down. And that's a handy break off from the Chinese. Played that very well. Not an easy shot to execute, is it? 
But he did it perfectly. Yeah, if Cliff Thorburn years ago wasn't it, introduced that shot and everybody's picked up on it like Stephen Henry did with the blue into the pink in the pack. So it's, uh, like I said, everything evolves, isn't it? Oh, he's hit the wrong side of the red there. Oh dear. That could be costly. That was the last thing that Ding needed, really, to let Selby straight back in with an easy starter. He's already in stroke with that break of 76, and he may well do something similar with this opportunity. Six. Seven. This is just what Mark was looking for. Twelve. Like I said, he's, he's back the opening frame. Great chance to take this one as well. Attempted red by Ding. He, he, well, he wasn't close. He hit the red on the wrong side. This one area of Ding's game which hasn't quite been on the money this week. It is his long game. And that's unusual because he's normally very reliable from long range. But there's quite a few this week. for this one that's fair enough he can get himself down for the blue but there's still what, what two or three four open reds here to go out before he has to do anything even more than that okay. 21 just having a cue ball clean just to just give himself some thinking time here Twenty-five. 
kicked a little bit, but he's just got there. 32. <clears throat> Great start from the Leicester man, Phil. This is just what he was looking for, isn't it? Fork. Yes, and it's not remotely surprising, really, is it? We know that Mark Selby is perhaps the most resilient player on the tour these days. And he arguably plays better from behind than he does what in he front. Want. He would relish this opportunity to come back at Dink. It's been a really terrific final. It's been a great week. 48. We had a maximum. Unfortunately, it was uh, unfortunately it was on one of the other tables, which wasn't televised. Steve Maguire still holds that seven thousand pound bonus. Going to him if one of these boys doesn't make it in the final. <coughs> Don't get too many in the final, dear. They tend to be early, early rounds. Yes, yeah, Selby, of course, made the 100th maximum break in professional competition. That was three years ago at the UK Championship, and what a maximum it was. Well, the final black to the left middle was brilliant, wasn't it? 56. But great players tend to bring 57. the best out in each other, don't they? And that's precisely what's happening here. They're both playing really well. Ding undoubtedly producing the best snooker of the week by him. And Selby doing likewise. Well, you know, if it becomes one visit stuff, what can you do? It was 76 in the first frame, but Mark, and was he 57 here and counting? Ding had the initial chance, missed that red to the corner. Closing 64. in on the frame. This red and another colour should do it for him. Ding Zhong Wei yet to pot a ball on the resumption. Seventy-three. Eight. Well, this is top quality stuff that doesn't get any better than this, and this is just a continuation of the opening session where they were having a pop at each other, and it was great stuff. And that's what it's all about. Good split. He didn't make the century in the opening frame in this evening session, but I'll tell you what, it's got a great chance now. What can you say, Phil? This is high quality stuff. If no. There was an air of inevitability about it from the moment that Ding missed that red from long range. He just got the feeling that Selby was going to make him pay. And he's done that with interest. Well, you said, you said that after that 76 in the opener tonight that a statement of intent. 95. This certainly is. OK, Ding, you might be 6-3 up going into this session, but you're going to have to win it. I'm not going to give it to you. 102. The third century of the match, the second by Selby. He made one in the fourth frame when he led 3-1. The red doesn't matter. Brilliant stuff. Snooker befitting a world number one and reigning world champion. And Ding Zhong we knows he's still got much to do to become Shanghai Masters champion.
for the second time. Mark Selby snapping at his heels. Ding's lead cut from 6-3 to six frames to five. Frame 12 coming up after the break. A comfort break for Ding. He's been hit by a couple of big punches by Mark Selby in this deciding session. Selby needed a fast start, and my goodness, he's had one. Breaks of 76 and 102. Ding yet to sink a ball on the resumption, and his lead cut to just a single frame. Can he respond in kind? Once more, as you've mentioned, Phil, his long game has not been hot this week. And uh, he's missed that by some distance and given Mark Selby an early chance in this one. And we've seen what's happened already. One. on the cue ball there he's just left it a fraction short he might even go back for the blue yeah I think so nine okay it would be nice if we could see another maximum in this final but uh, for Mark Selby it's all about putting frames on the board Steve Maguire wouldn't agree with you Should one of these players make another 147? And of course, Maguire would have to share his £7,000 bonus. I always remember that time of the Crucible 15. when Ronnie O'Sullivan made his maximum and then Ali Carter made one the following day. And Ronnie said, Well, that's another, that's a new Bentley then. And Ali said, We'll have to be a smaller one now. It's quite it was brilliant, that wasn't it? Two in two days, it was brilliant. Yes, it was a great tournament, wasn't it? <coughs> Those are the days when it was a Pant. thousand pounds a point, wasn't it? 147 plus about, I think Mark Williams made one, made 163,000 just for the maximum. Plenty of one. Covered it. Still got the one on the left hand side, but he's slightly awkward. 28. He was just looking for a little cannon there. <coughs> well over 200 points without reply now, though. Mark Selby indulging in some heavyweight scoring. Can he keep it going? And shots like. like that, so much easier, Mike, when... You've had the kind of table time that Selby has enjoyed since they came back out into the arena. Yep. He's, he's got Ding cold at the moment. He wants to keep him there in that chair. That's what it's all about. This is uh, top draw stuff here from the world champion, world number one. That's why he is where he is, because of stuff like this. And that bulletproof it's temperament different. to go with the talent and the scoring power. So it's like he's got the titanium suit back on again. Ooh, just picking him up and he's missed that one. The first error he's made, a surprising one. And at last, some light relief for Ding Zhongwei. 
Not an absolute gimme, but the way Selby's been queuing, you would have expected him to get it. Question is whether Ding can punish him for it. And that's the problem. Whereas Selby is red hot right now, Ding, as Mike mentioned, is ice cold. And that wasn't a gimme as a starter when you haven't had very many shots. Ding's wait for a first red of this concluding session goes on <coughs> and that's gone awry as well a shaky start for the home favourite A chance for Selby. One. Just might have landed too straight on the blue, so he's taken the, the green here. A couple of blue threads down the end of the table. Yes, yeah, so this wasn't in the, in the uh, Dings and Wee script at all, and nor for his fans. And what we're seeing here is the impact that an interval can have. Remember, Mark Selby was flying before the, third, the first mid-session break. 3-1 up with a century. He wanted to stay out there. 15 minutes later, it all changed around. Ding won five on the spin. And now, since they've resumed again, it's been all Selby. Five. <coughs> yeah, it wasn't easy to play that. Wanted to get into the cue ball a little bit more, but I, th I thought he might be playing the brown when he's playing the blue. Oh, that's a great shot. Nicely controlled. Might Ten. go back for the blue here to split the pack. Hard match snooker here from the world champion. Got into it too much. Well, if he'd have caught the yellow full ball, he would have been OK. He would have had a, a pot on the brown to get into the pack. This is not plan A anymore. I'm not quite sure what he's going to do here, whether tuck him behind the brown or take the four points. I mean, you can push a colour save as well, with, especially with a 44-point lead. for the snooker. Mark Selby, 11. Mark Selby, more than happy to turn the screw. It's now 222 points without reply. So often we see the skills of these boys and the, the judgment, the angle, the pace. It's perfect. There was a danger that Ding might have left that red on, but it seems OK.
Uh, Ding just has to be patient here, keep focused. I mean, he will get other chances, but that's the time to pounce. Uh, again, easy said than done when the opponent has had probably about, what, 95% of the table time. Shaded area, that's the non hitting area, of course. So the balls aren't on, you can see this one though. Well, at least this gives Ding the chance to open up the pack. He's, uh, he's 44 points behind and a chance to get him behind the yellow as well. Great effort. Not quite the snooker. I think Mark can see this one near the top cushion. Two inches to the left. It was perfect. Really has built into a great match this, Phil. Both players producing their A game when it really matters with a title at stake. Both very aware of the other's talent and the need to be at their best to win. All in all, a great spectacle for the crowd. about halfway through potentially three centuries been made if it goes the distance we might have two or three more bonus it would be for Mark Selby if he could win the first three on the resumption Well, he's eyeing up this red now, the blue, and he's also had a look at the pink, so I, it must mean that he, he's thinking of taking this one on, screwing across for the pink. That's been the pattern from both men throughout the final. They've both gone for their shots at every opportunity. Well, if he plays the keyboard to the left cushion, the talk eye comes and shows us, yes, he can see that, and he can play in such a way, the reds are covering each other to that corner pocket. That is on. That's what he's looking at. He's looking to pop this one in the corner and stay on the pink. No, just depends where the red finishes. Could have been worse. It was quite a long way off with the pot. He knows, had he got it, would have been a great chance for his third straight frame to tie the final. Now can Ding finally get on the scoreboard? Well, he's taking this one to the left corner. Not easy. He's missed it by quite a distance. Well, we've said it several times, but both players willing to take risks to impose their game on the other. At the moment, those risks aren't paying off for Dink. Yeah, it seems OK, though. I don't think he's left uh, Mark anything on here. It's possible cut back into the corner. Hmm. Well, he's, he's wondering what's going on at the moment. He's had two or three, what we call, half chances, not full ones. And if Mark pops his red in, it could be uh, six apiece. Yeah, much easier. Well, it looks much easier from that camera angle. It's not a bad nudge as well on the blue. He's got the angle to come down for the open red to the right corner on the black, and here we go again, Phil. Yes, one good pot here, and you put your house on Selby making it six apiece. 
Well, I said earlier on that his target would be 3-1 to the interval. 4-0 would be a bonus. And well, still, Ding has six. not scored a point in this session. Seven. Sixty seven remaining. Fifty one the lead. He's pretty close to making it six apiece. Well, of course, if he does, he'll be after the next one as well. You know, from six three behind to lead seven six at the interval, that really put a, a few seeds of doubt in uh, Ding's mind. I've often said in this game that all the abilities and the skill is there at the table, but so often it's all about what's between the ears and what goes on with the psychological side of the game. Yes, and equally, it doesn't matter how talented, gifted you are, if you're not at the table, you can't impose those gifts. And Ding has scarcely been at the table in this evening's session. Crowd acknowledging... The winning post has been passed again by Mark Selby, who has yet to concede a point. Well, there was a few there that was applauding this, but there's also a gentleman there that was shaking his head, and they cannot believe what's happening to Ding Junhui here. Well, he hasn't done a lot wrong, has he? No. A couple of missed long pots, one loose safety. No real glaring misses there, Phil. You know, there have been half chances, again, with, with no table time. He's been given a taste of his own medicine after doing... Pretty much the same to Selby Sit. in the second half of the opening session. It's been a streaky final. 3-1 Selby, 6-3 Ding, and now 6 apiece. Sit. Sit. Eight. Be another century for Selby. Beg your pardon, he was in first with 33, wasn't he, before he missed one? 45. Forty-six. That's two hundred and sixty-eight points without reply and counting. 51. 53. <laughs> well, it's a dream start, isn't it, to this concluding session of our final here in Shanghai for Mark Selby. Another decisive break from him. It's been all Selby. And he's clawed from 6-3 behind to 6 apiece. Food for thought for Ding Zhonghui. A 6-3 lead coming into this concluding session of the Shanghai Masters final. A commanding one, but it's been wiped away in no time by some sublime snooker from Mark Selby. He's really in the mood. And Ding now has to respond. He's yet to score a point in the first three frames of this evening session in Shanghai. The first to ten, of course, to be crowned champion. 275 points without reply for the world number one.
This is the last frame before the final interval. Well, given the circumstances, a great pot once again, Ding, regardless of what's happened already tonight, determined to go for it. It's been his strategy from the very first ball, and that was quite some red. Gutsy from the home favourite. unbelievable what a great cutback on the yellow Three. and again there's an element of the devil may care about Ding in this final but who's to argue with him he's six all with the world champion and world number one mm. that wasn't part of the script well, well maybe he did get a heavy contact there mm, yeah well Mark's having the cue ball cleaned Has he done any damage? Well, it wasn't an easy red, and it was probably worth the risk because Selby knew he wasn't going to be leaving much. He's not going to go for this red too, is he? Not this time. What entertainment these two players have produced. And it's still right in the balance. Six frames all, both need four more. Well, fair way away there. thing is, can Ding make the most of this and still lead 7-6 going into the interval? I think he'll take that after the battering he's had. Still relatively cold though, just the three points to show for this session so far. And we've seen the momentum swing, what, two, three times already in this match, you know, in this final on the coming occasion here, where it might swing back the other way. the fascination of this game, Phil, isn't it? You never know what's coming, do you? It's been a real shootout, hasn't it? It's yep. been high octane snooker from this pair. Long may it continue. Eight. They're putting on a show. Just as they did in the world final. And it was Ding's slow start in that final that really cost him in the end. He was very competitive in the middle stages and the closing stages, but by then Selby had built up a pretty handy lead, which he ended up nursing to the line. Yeah, let's not forget that he had to play three more matches than Mark as well for the qualifiers. If he'd have been in round one, he would have been world champion. 16. You think of it that way. Yeah. Just, what, was it five matches to be world champion? He had, he, well, he, would have had, he won seven. He didn't get the eighth one, though, unfortunately. 17. 
Mind you, I do think those qualifying rounds were a big reason why he was able to play as well as he did yeah. when he got to the Crucible. I wouldn't, uh, wouldn't disagree with that. It really sharpened him up. But he's looking hungry again. You know, he, he, two seasons ago, he, he uh, had those uh, five ranking event victories and then his form dipped a little bit last year, but he's looking hungry once more. The old Four adage, before. form is temporary, class is permanent. I mean, he knows it's still in there some way. You don't win five on the bounce against the world number one like he did and not be playing well. He's just got to find it again. And I say only comes with table time. We've mentioned all of that. So if he could just pop in a 70 or 80 here and go into the interval still ahead, well, that's OK. And sometimes you've just got to accept that the other player's been too good. Hold your hands up and say, well, he's potted me off the table. I just have to wait my turn because I'm capable of doing exactly the same. Whatever happens, Phil. Oh, what a great shot that is. Nice little cannon there to open up the race. Well, just about to say, whatever happens here in this frame, it sets things up nicely for the end of this final. Well, I think the general consensus going into this final was that it was going to be close. And you wouldn't mind betting that it'll go 40. to a 19th and deciding frame. The way these two are playing, every chance. But a big frame for Ding, as you say, because had he lost this one as well, then there would have been seeds of doubt planted. But so far, it's looking good for him. And of course now, he would rather stay out there than have an interval. That's exactly what I was going to say. But uh, there's good attitude from Ding here. It is. He's not quite over the winning line yet, of course. So we might be being a little bit previous. But 51 in front. Red still open. Great chance to edge back in front. 49. Fifty five. Sixty-one. Sixty-two. Ding is back in business. That was the frame ball. Six for seven six, having sat out the first three. What a final this is. Brilliant. And this has been some response, hasn't it? Because he barely potted a ball yeah. before he got this opportunity and he's never looked 
like relinquishing it. Well, this is what these great players are all about, aren't they? You know, they can just blank out of the minds and uh, you know delete five. it out of the memory banks and just come back even stronger. 76. Uh, this is all about character. It was about character for Ding Junhui in this frame, and he's shown plenty. Breaks of 76, 103, 53 from Selby. 83. Four his way back to 6 all from 6 3 down. Ding didn't score a single point in those three frames. But now it's his turn again, having put together his own five frame burst from 3 1 down. And he'll hope to continue it after the final interval. Plenty of side there to get over for this red. Uh, you know, these are always tricky, but 89. more tricky if you needed it. The pressure on, but uh, the frame is won anyway. I fancy him to pop this in, get a good angle, and then nudge that red towards the corner pocket for the century. Bless you, sir. It's not to be sneezed at, is it? No. Oh, I don't think it was actually. It's only the pace. So the break goes to 90. Still plenty to do to make the century. Well, you can play him behind the red, might even just try and nudge it. Chose to play on it. That's perfect. Uh, well, I thought it was going to be. It's just run on this this table. It's so quick. Well, I'd like to see this go in. Go on. Go on. Go on. No. Just a little wide. No century. But what a performance from Ding, having been frozen out by Mark Selby, who's right back in this final. Ding leading 7-6. All to play for in the final session after the mid-session interval. What a final this is. The standard sky high and Ding leads 7 6. Thank you. Frame 14. Max Serbi to break. Two great players operating near the peak of their powers. Fabulous final. The 22nd meeting between this pair with Selby just edging it, 11-10. Ding eyeing some revenge for his loss to Selby in the World Championship final back in the spring. Play that well. There's just the danger that if he had caught one of the book colours, he might have left a red on. It's, it's pretty good now. And the way they're both scoring, this final could well be decided by the safety battle from here on in. Who can get that cue ball tight to the book cushion more often? Yeah, I wouldn't disagree with that, Phil.
I think there's a red here that he might be able to cut back into the left corner with safety in mind. Oh, it's, it, it actually flicked off the other red. But I think he's covered it. And now Selby's got to leave it safe. Miles too thick. He didn't swing the cue ball enough. He was hoping to get that cue ball behind the yellow on the back cushion, cover this one. So he has, uh, has forced the error out of the Englishman. The problem for Ding here is to get onto a colour. There's plenty of reds that he can go into. He's got to find a gap actually for the blue or the pink. Not bad. I think he'll settle for that. Got blitz in the first three frames of the session. Stood his ground in the last one. As things turned around again. It's been a fascinating final so far. The best players in the world have a habit of saving their best for when it really matters and Ding has done just that. Seven. It wasn't entirely convincing in making the final and indeed his semi-final against Stephen Maguire was a patchy, often awkward sort of affair. But he stepped his game up several levels to face Selby just as he needed to do. Eight. Just had a quick look at the pink there. It will go to the left corner so he's got options. As you see, the black's tied up for the minute, but uh, pink and blue available. Plenty of reds available. <coughs> 13. Nineteen. Twenty. And if Ding can make the most of this opportunity, the pressure's right back on the world champion. Getting ever nearer the winning line. Well, he's stuck in there against um, Stuart Bingham, didn't he, in the, uh, in the semi-final. Three down. Three to play. Or rather, two down with three to play. He won the last three to deny Bingham. Mark Selby. Have to do something similar today. So it's history. Well, great attitude here from Ding Zhongwei. You know, like I said, the first three frames doesn't wasn't wasn't in them. But uh, as I've already mentioned, uh, stood his ground. It wasn't as though he was letting Selby in with silly mistakes, though, was it? I think he could just be fairly relaxed about the fact that. The world champion was playing some fabulous stuff and that he had to be patient and wait his turn. I think frames are probably 
easier to accept when they go against you in those circumstances, Mike. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, like you said, but the thing was, the hard thing, is, like we said, we said it before, that it was the lack of table time for Ding. And every time he came to the table, it was a hard pot to take on. There was nothing really easy for him. But uh, it's all back together now. Selby's turn to warm his chair again. Got to be careful here because he's obviously he's going into the pack and Foot. he could push the pink away up the other end of the table. It's going to be difficult to get onto a colour here. I think he's just got to hit this and then just see what happens because it's, it's difficult to get away from these reds. And don't forget to pop the red in the process. Well, there's a shot they can play here, which these boys have played before, where he's potted the red and bounced the cue ball over the pack. It's not deemed a foul shot because he's already played the initial red. I've seen them play this before. But he's going through them with topspin. Well, now he's thinking about it. Oh. I think that will do. Did that go in? He split the reds, that's for sure. And well, it didn't. It didn't actually move the pink till then. Incredible. <laughs> Mobile phone. Please switch them off. Well, that's gone slightly wrong. Caught the green. He's blocked the uh, the path of the red in the corner. And there's not much down here either. Didn't quite put the blue in the middle of the pocket there. It was just a sort of side of the pocket. And that's why he caught the green on the way back. Ding knows that that 46-point lead could quickly evaporate. Handy lead, however. This will be a big frame now for Selby to win. 46 points behind, and there haven't been many frames like that most of them have been won with a big break on either side rather than pinched from some way behind. So very significant frame now. to avoid the push shot. Did a pretty good job with that tricky shot. So much snooker to look forward to on Eurosport in the coming weeks, of course. In just over a week's time, we'll be bringing you the European Open, a brand new event to be staged in Romania. And then it's the start of the Home Nation series, the English Open kicking off that quartet of events. Event City in Manchester is the venue. Tickets on sale for that one via the World Snooker website. Excellent safety from Ding. He really has been spot on with his tactical game this week, even when he's not quite been firing as regards the break building and the potting. And after the English Open, we've still got the Irish Open, the Scottish Open. And sandwiched between those two events, the UK Championship, the International Championship. Back in China for that one. So much snooker to look forward to before Christmas here on Eurosport. Short of pace, 
It was an excellent safety from Ding. Can he be tempted? Already 46 points in front. If this goes in, it could be a frame winner. Right in the heart of the pocket. as cleanly as he would have intended but it's worked out rather nicely six left on the table so Ding just a few pots away from an 8-6 advantage do the trick 18 19. he's taken these exceptionally well and it was the excellent safety which got Mark Selby in a spot of bother as though it's 25. going to be Selby's turn to fail to trouble the scorers just as Ding was 26. unable to in the first three frames in this concluding session been punch and counter punch from the very first ball spectacular final in terms of the quality we haven't had a scrappy frame 32 Forty six, forty seven, fifty two. Yet another half century. Sublime snooker from Ding Zhongwei. What a response to that blitz from Selby. He's won the last two frames for 8 6. Talk about saving the best till last. For my money, the best match of the tournament. The quality has been off the scale from both players. World number one, world champion Mark Selby. An 11 time Grand Slam winner, Ding Zhongwei, going at it. Hammer and tongs, and it's Ding now. With a very commanding 8-6 advantage. He's just two frames away from the winning post. Mark Selby doesn't have a great deal of room for error from here on in. But you never, ever, Mike Hallett, count Selby out. No, nope. not at all. So often he puts the deflectors on.
Well, he certainly asked some big questions of Ding, didn't he, in the way he came out for this final session. Three big frames, scoring so heavily, Ding didn't get a look in. But how well the Chinese has responded to that. Anything you can do? Well, the onus is now back on Mark, isn't it? To do the same. Well, I think there's still plenty of snooker left in this final. Yes, and the pressure becomes that much greater, doesn't it, as we head towards the finale. White could be close. Oh, wow, it's a great billiard shot. Of course, he's left a red on. Now when Mark's got the ball in hand, the cue ball, I should say. It's Mark Selby's turn to suffer a little here with the lack of table time. Yes, and now in the knowledge that Ding is just two frames away from the title. One. Extra difficulty attached to a pot like the one Selby just missed and make matters worse, of course, Ding straight back in. Three one down, six three up. Eight. Peg back to six all, and now possibly eyeing his own Nine. three frame burst. And that would take some retrieving. He's done it before, Selby. Did it to Ronnie O'Sullivan in the Welsh Open final a few years ago. It was, was he eight five there? One nine eight, I think it was. Sixteen. This will open a few more reds, actually. Well, two or three, I think. Oh, he's not got into the cue ball. That's poor. 17. He was trying to force the reds open, but get back for the black at the same time. He'll be, well, he'll be angry with himself there. And Mark Selby, sitting in his chair, will be relieved. He would have expected Ding to make a commanding break there, if not a frame-winning one. As it is, just 13 points between them. Well, that's about all he could do there, really. But uh, he's left a potential red to the yellow pocket. It's not easy, tucked under the top cushion. You could just roll into the pack. Surely not a tactical frame. I thought they were banned in this final. Well, throw one in. I think he's looking at the red to the left middle. Tough from there. Crikey. I'll say. Tell you what, it's not far away. What can you say? That is magnificent from Selby. I mean, talk about gutsy. 8-6 down. He sat out the previous two frames. If he misses that, he's giving Ding another opportunity to go three up with four to play. That is the courage of a world champion. And the thing is as well, you know, that's that's the difference. That's why they are, I say they are where they are, you know, because they have that courage. And um, Ding knew that was a calculated risk. I mean, he couldn't do any more but put the cue ball tight to the cushion. Oh, he <laughs> just wriggled in. And, uh, you know, he did his, his part, but what a red. I mean, that reminds me of the red in the, in the week Six. that John Higgins dropped into the left middle. Dead weight. Well, I'm sure Ding would have been delighted to see Selby taking that red on. Mm. But not it going in. Question is, can he make full capital from that brilliant opener? Seven. We've seen some great finals down the years in whatever tournament it has been, but this is up there with them.
didn't hold back there either, but this time... 11. Certainly could have been better. Still has the red to the green pocket. The way these two have been going at it today, they've not been shying away from anything. That one's no good. It's got to be the one to the green pocket, surely. And that is a very tough pot. He's already made one in this break. Can you keep pushing the boat out, though, when you're 8-6 down in a race to 10? Well, if he decides to try and hold for the black or the pink here, Phil, it's all or nothing, isn't it? I mean, he could play it with power and stun the cue ball down the table off the side cushion, but he could go full-blooded and just run dead weight into the pink, but leaving everything on for Ding. I think he's looking for the safety, so you can't blame him for doing that at this stage. Yep, he's not interested in the pot. There's no percentage in that one. Maxabi 11. He's played it pretty well. Is he coming off the one near the top cushion? Oh, how well is he at that? Unbelievable. I don't think I've ever seen Ding Jun Wee play better safety play than he has during this tournament. Well, if he'd have said, can I put the wires up and put it there, then he would have taken it. If you can keep finding that bought cushion, it really does crank up the pressure on your opponent. Yeah, he was, he was slightly forced into a pot there, Mark. Might have finished worse, actually. Ding's on, the side of this red is on for Ding in the, to the right corner. It depends if he can just miss the other red, the cue ball. Well, he's having a go. Well, he caught the red, but he got the cue ball down the table. And again, you know, hardly anything being refused. And again, a great safety, forcing the error from Selby or forcing him into a pot that perhaps he would rather not have taken on to give Ding this chance. Yeah, nice pace there as well, just get between the blue and the four. pink. A little bit more down the table would have been handy, but I think he can get over for the black here. So it's just another six ways in just down the table would have been probably perfect. But it's okay. Oh, would you believe it? Did you have four? We haven't seen many of those today from either player. Do you know, I think that might, be, might have been one of those occasions, Phil, where he, he was down on the shot, but he still wasn't deciding what to do with it. But he took it anyway. You have to clear your mind before you decide what you're going to do. Possibly. And perhaps maybe they're just beginning to feel the heat now as we head to the denouement of this tournament. Ding eight, Selby six, the first to ten to be crowned champion. And you've got to feel that Selby really has to win this frame. But no. Catches the near jaw. Never easy. No great damage done.
It's worth remembering that Ding Xiongui was a couple of balls away from a first round exit in this tournament. Scott Donaldson missed an easy red by all accounts to knock Ding out 5 4. He trailed 3 1 in any case. And we said at the time that it was, we've seen it so often, players like that getting through that first round and then suddenly go on to win the title. That's still a possible for Ding Zhongui. Oh, even more so, that mistake from Mark. Didn't like that one at all. Well, this is the nerviest frame we've seen in the final so far. The standard has been outstanding. Perhaps they're both beginning to feel it a bit. It's a huge frame. The difference between a three-frame cushion and just one for Ding. Well, this has not become the battle of the Green Bays. This has become a battle of the minds between these two because we know that how well they're playing, Phil, and it's just about there, isn't it, in the head now. We're just going to be slightly the stronger. Yeah, normally you'd say Mark Selby would hold the aces in that regard, but he's two frames adrift, mm. and Ding's at the table with a chance to make it three. And looking very, very comfortable. Seven. Eight. Well, if this is dead straight, you'll, you'll probably hold the spot here. No, it wasn't. Had to move it a little bit, but it's okay. Fourteen. Fifteen. Good thing for Ding here that he didn't panic when he saw Mark coming back at him. He just remained patient. He knew that his game was there. He knew that it would come back to him. Handsome. When you get a match like this, though, Phil, you want both of them to lift the trophy, don't you? <laughs> it's terrific. Well, you mentioned it's right up there as one of the best finals we've seen in recent seasons, and I don't think there can be any argument about that. How many more twists and turns might we yet see? Well, you can see the anger in Mark Selby when he sort of switched the cue and he knew when he played that poor safety shot that he might go 9-6 behind. He, he wanted to capture this one to get closer to Ding. And if he loses it, well, he's got it all to do. I'm not saying he's, he's not, he is capable of winning from there, but it's going to be hard work. It's just been so impressive the way Ding has absorbed that onslaught from Selby. Three frames going the world number one's way in no time to draw level. But it was that 13th frame, the composure that Ding showed to re-establish his lead going into the final mid-session break which was so impressive and he's building on that now well you might be going to the same tailors as Mark Selby uh, Phil we've got those uh, inbuilt deflectors 35 it's certainly an area of Ding's game that has come on leaps and bounds in recent years his temperament is so much stronger now than it was earlier in his career I think, again, it was a plus for him to go to Terry Griffiths, another player that's with uh, Terry Griffiths. And, you know, again, he seems to have, like Michael Holt, he's just calmed his temperament down a little bit. And what he said to probably to Ding, he said, well, listen, whatever happens, happens out there. I think to the point where the expectation, wasn't it, on his shoulders, and he was feeling it. There's no doubt about that. He wanted to win. Every time he went out there, he was giving it 100%. But he was probably putting too much pressure on himself. Well, he's won this frame, barring snookers. The crowd delighted about that. But the thing is, you know, it, it gives it 100% and, and it's just a case of what happens on the day, you know, or what happens in the week. 48. But looking like this, he, he's, uh, he's got a good season ahead of him. 49. And of course, he's also got a wealth of big match experience now, hasn't he? And he has had to carry the extra pressure of that weight of expectation from his millions of fans here in China. Mark Selby looking a little miserable. He knows he's got it all to do now. Mm. 
angry with himself that he didn't play a better 55. safety. It's cost him the frame. Yet another half-century break in this fabulous match, which has flown by. But it may not have too much further to travel the way this guy is queuing. 85,000 pounds. 61. 85,000 ranking points going to the winner. 63. Brilliant stuff from Ding Junhui, punishing Martin Selby's loose safety with another frame-winning break for a 9-6 lead. He's one away from the title. The world number one with it all to do. Trailing 9-6. Zheng Wei Li, our referee for the final, resets the balls. Will it be for the final time? Ding Junhui now on the cusp, leading as he is over Mark Selby by nine frames to six. Selby out of the blocks like a train at the start of this concluding session winning three on the bounce to close to six all from six three down but Ding has done exactly the same to Selby to now put himself within a frame of victory at nine six both players popping out for a comfort break but the standard Mike in this final has been absolutely outstanding yeah it has it really has and and you know it's, it's not surprising they've both stepped out just to think about what's going on here you know as you said ding one frame away from another shanghai masters title and uh, and mark selby world number one wanting to impose himself probably not just on this tournament but on the coming season and uh, it's been outstanding from both of them but you could see the anger in mark selby there when he sort of switched the cue across the cushion didn't he when he knew that that safety shot he played was not good enough and it did cost him the frame Yes, he also knew that the way Ding is queuing, it was almost certainly going to be his last meaningful shot of the frame. And so it proved. Both players have been very adept at punishing the other's mistakes today. We've seen a string of high breaks. We've seen centuries. It's just been a fabulous spectacle. Not much in the way of safety, but when Ding Zhongwei has had to play a telling safety shot, as he's done throughout the tournament, he's produced it. And a couple of times he's made full capital out of the resulting error from his opponent. Yeah, and both players have not really backed away from anything, have they? Apart from, you know, it's not, you don't play the ridiculous uh, pots, you don't take them on, just be suicidal. It's just, it was on the occasion there where Mark could have taken that red on to the green pocket, chose to play the safety. You know, that's just madness. But, you know, if there's been a, a they've looked at the percentages and they've looked at the pots and they've taken a lot on. And this is a, just a few highlights from earlier on. And there have been many of those right from the get-go. Both players have been so attacking. Both going for pretty much everything that's on. Not in a reckless way, as Mike said, but if they've eyed the chance for the frame, yeah. they've gone for it because they're feeling confident about the chances of clinching it from yeah. there. It's been, uh, it's been calculated, hasn't it? You know, weighed up the percentages. Secure from 16. Mark Selby to break. Mark Selby has produced some wonderful comebacks down the years to win titles. He's got to do it all over again in Shanghai. A possible four frames to play. He needs all four. And also at the back of his mind, he knows that his next mistake could be his last because Ding is playing that well.
查好的观众把我算进来。Right to the middle then. Oh, what a chance that would have been, Black there. The margins are so fine, it just brushed the near jaw, that was enough to keep the red out. Hardly any of the centre pocket to aim for. Selby breathes again. Well, is he having a go at this? I thought he might just leave the white to the top cushion. Missed it. That was a big shot to take on. Well, both players have been doing just that right from the start. And Selby sees no reason, even at 9-6 down, to change his strategy. The question now is how expensive that decision will be. What? It's part of the reason that this final has been so incredibly entertaining that both of them have not taken a backward step. And we know that Selby is more than happy to mix it in the scrappy frames and battle it out for as long as it takes. Today, he's been as attacking as I've ever seen him. But he's 9-6 down. Eight. And that attempted red to the corner might, just might, be his last shot in this year's Shanghai Masters. Fourteen. Oh, great split. And he has the red to the middle. Went aggressive there. Fifteen. Nineteen. thought that was too wide but it was all about the pace it's just slid in off the near jaw he stayed down 24. on that he was a bit concerned that that wasn't going to drop but he's still going any harder and it would have stayed on the lip of the pocket for sure as it is on we go 25 the lead Twenty-five. Thirty-two. Thirty-three. Forty. 
41. Right, goes to 41. I just wondered whether that attempted red by Mark into the corner, which wasn't easy, by the way. He's, you know, he's refused one or two others. We probably could say they were slightly easier than that one. I thought he might have put the cue ball to the top cushion, but it's Ding that's still at the table. Is he about to win the frame and the match here? It wouldn't be a surprise. Another very delicate touch. 46. To keep prime position. And I think with the red splitter as they are, a 47 point lead, he'll be disappointed if he doesn't clinch the title here. Oh, my goodness me. Uh, Is that a kick? I think it might have been, you know, Phil, because it's gone fairly straight to the side, side cushion, hasn't it? I think he could have had a kick there. I'll give Ding the benefit. I think the crowd knew before Ding did that that wasn't dropping in the pocket. Well, was it a kick? I couldn't see a lot there. Was it a little bit of tension in the arm? He knew he was very close to clinching the match. Won the title there. Just note that one down as a potential turning point. And this is no gimme to the middle as well. 46 points behind. He wanted to be much closer to the black than this. He's, he's got to cue this well. If he misses this, it could be all over. Well, there you go. And that is pressure. That is pure pressure. Mark Selby, what? Mark Selby is the best player in the world. He's the world number one. He's the world champion. But even he feels the heat. And that is what? a less off for Ding, for sure, because had Selby done the business there, who knows? Well, it was always a possible, Phil, wasn't it? Because he played the red out in the corner pocket and he didn't get close enough to that black and that made all the difference. Ding certainly didn't intend to hit the brown. It's OK, though. Well, he's inching six. his way to the winning line here. 52 in front, only 67 left. So a couple more reds should do it. say the final frame you need is the hardest to win and this isn't straightforward I think he's playing a straighter one in to stun over for the black I think or down for the blue oh don't go in there don't go in there oh. Seven. Oh. <laughs> that was a heart in the mouth moment for Ding and his legion of fans Nothing against Mark Selby, of course. Well, they both felt it in this frame. There's no question about that. But Ding now is within touching distance. Frame ball, match ball, championship ball. In it goes. There's the roar. What a match this has been. One of the best finals we've seen. And there have been many candidates for that title, but this has been right up there. Well, the pink doesn't drop, and you can be absolutely sure that Selby will fight on. 51 left, so a couple of snookers to tie. <laughs> what a dramatic finale. Yeah, our referee Zeng well, he's just trying to quiet the crowd down here, give a little bit, you know, respect to Mark. It's still under pressure, but I, I wonder if that pink just moved a bit, you know, there, Phil. It seemed to come away from the pocket. Well, had it gone in, I think Mark Selby would probably have offered his hand. As yeah. it is, yeah. he'll keep scrapping away. There's a small light at the end of the tunnel here. But at the moment, it's, uh, it's quite a way away. And if there's one man who could turn this frame around, it's the guy at the table. He's done it many times before. I've seen him win frames from two, three snookers adrift. But what a time it would be to do that and keep this final alive can't happen can it well it would certainly be a big blow to ding if he could <laughs> but he has much to do Eight.
Nine. Well, you'll probably keep the, uh, the the last red on here and try and lay the snooker. Just to put in 44 behind, with 35 on. And of course, that's significant because it 15. now means he needs three snookers of the four-point variety. It's a free ball. Well, this isn't a bad effort. Not quite far enough. Selby that needs the snookers. I'm not sure whether you can see any of this. And that's the thing, isn't it? When your opponent needs snookers, it's so important to try and wrest control of the table from them and don't allow them to dictate and set up the chance to get them. Well, he's got to get it safe, but the other problem here, Phil, is I think that that yellow is set to the brown. Surely it won't go in off the brown. He's playing off the cushion anyway. He's only got about half of the ball to hit here. Foul. Caught the yellow. Dangerous now, ball. is it all over? It might well, it certainly will be if this red goes into the centre. 48 now the difference, just 35 left, four snookers required. <laughs> well, Ding eager to get it over with, but not quite there yet. Surely not even Mark Selby can turn this around. On the other hand, Go around this. Looks good. Oh no! Well, there's one. One down, three to go. Well, it might be a cue ball around the angles behind the black here again. He's under hit it. Well, it wasn't a good angle, but he under hit it anyway. Is Ding going to nurse this red to the pocket? I heard you, Phil. Well, there's no real point in potting this. To make sure he gets on the black, so I think it's uh, it's pretty easy just to bounce the red off the cushion, take it down the table. You can't get a snooker from this, but you can at least get a good safety and just be patient. The key for Selby is to get that red safe, give him the option of battling another day for the snookers he needs. He cannot afford to leave this red on, otherwise, it's well and truly game over. Just straight up and down, I think, to the top cushion. Well, he's, oh, hang on, hang on, what an effort this is. I didn't think he'd play it that way. Oh, this is unbelievable. Well, I tell you, what, I didn't spot that, Phil. I mean, what great thoughts and what great execution. And great appreciation from this largely pro Ding Zhongwei crowd. They recognise skill when they see it. And I can tell you that Ding's heart will be beating a little bit faster now because he has had chances to kill this off completely. He missed the pink. He had a shot on the red. Goodness me, if he lost this frame, would he recover? Well, I 
didn't see that coming. That was, that was a great shot. Selby still needs three snookers, remember. There's the second one. Five. So, two down, four, or rather four down, two to go. My goodness me, what a frame this would be to win. And I tell you, it would take some recovering from for Ding if he were to lose it. Well, that snooker on the brown there, or behind the brown, was brilliant. It's one of the best I've ever seen. And he's turning the screw, Selby. He has never beaten this guy until the handshake. And he's putting Ding through the ringer here. Ding so close to the title, he can touch it, but he's not there yet. Great hit, only just. Forty the difference, thirty five remaining. Two four point snookers required for Selby to win a frame that looked a million to one shot just a few minutes ago. Just got a trace of side on the white though. Well, it's gone too far. It depends whether it passes the brown. If it does, well, you have a go at this. I think it will. Well, another chance here for Ding Junhui then to really kill off the frame and the match. Don't go in there. Two guys are providing some theatre, aren't they? Oh. <laughs> Another roll, and it would have been in. Well, he looks calm, but I don't think he's feeling that calm right now. And I've got a feeling Mark Selby's loving every minute of this. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, Ding will be going, just leave me alone. Well, any time you beat Selby, you know that you've earned it. And he's not beaten just yet. Well, that would have been outrageous if he executed that snooker. Would have been even better than the one before. Mm. And he wasn't far away. He might be in one of his own here, though. In behind the yellow by Dink. That just shows you what sort of a snooker brain Mark Selby has got, isn't it, Phil? I mean, the snooker he got behind the brown, and that attempt there, was, again, was, was genius, really. I don't think there's anyone better in the modern game at getting snookers than Selby. That's why you have to be clinical, because just one or two is often not enough against this guy. But he's still very much up against it here, Ding still hot favourite to win this frame and with it the title. Well, even more so if he managed to get the snooker behind the yellow. Got to be careful of the brown. Well, there you see, he was trying to get him behind the black. Again, good thought. And as you say, Phil, these two boys certainly uh, dishing up some 30 here. I just wonder whether Ding might go for the cross double into the green pocket here with an element of safety. It goes past the brown, but half ball on the red, and it could go into the green pocket. Yes, and if he fails to pot the red into the pocket where the brown is, then he runs the risk of Selby being able to lay a snooker. 
So he's tried a different safety. Well, this will help if he pushes the black safe. <laughs> Bit of extra insurance for Ding. Mm. Just look where the brown and the yellow are now. Chances. And there's one here. <coughs> no, he's caught it too thin. Or oh, has he? Or oh, has he? What am I saying? Brilliant. What am I saying? I didn't think that was going to get anywhere near there. And this is fiendish. This really is difficult because the red is so close to the pink. He's got to be very careful here. This is eminently missable. Imagine if he hits the pink instead of the red. I mean, uh, this is what it's all about, Phil, isn't it? If he does what Mike just said, Selby can win. Oh, that is brilliant from Ding Zhongwei. Brilliant. Acknowledged by Selby. Could so easily have caught the pink there, and then Selby could have cleared up to win a frame. He had no right to. Well, you know, that's great uh, commitment there and, and coolness under pressure from Ding Zhongwei. And they're so difficult to judge off one cushion. Much easier off two, but to come off one and get the perfect angle. This is some frame. This is some match. Just a little too hard. Well, how on earth has he gone around that black? I didn't think there was room for that. If he just nudges that black slightly, it's full ball snooker. Yeah, I don't think he legislated for the fact that he could miss it altogether. Well, it doesn't look like you can get a ball through there. Relief for Ding, for sure, because had Selby got it behind the black, that would have been nigh on impossible to hit. Well, yeah. well it's all out of misery, Ding, just not this red in. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't mean misery in that way, do you know what I mean? Well, it's tense, for sure. It is. But the crowd are loving it. They'll love it even more if this red disappears. So, you could be going for this, you know. Forty the difference, thirty-five remaining. Two snookers required. He's already got two snookers. Well, the escape by Ding behind that yellow was brilliant. I mean, Mark again was so unlucky not to get that white tight behind the black. Didn't need much, just needed a little nudge, and it was there. Oh, which way is he going to play this? That way. Behind the yellow once more. I wasn't quite sure whether he could avoid the double kiss there, but he has done. This is easier to hit. I mean, if the white was tight to the yellow, it wasn't. But again, off one cushion, uh, he should get this. Needs to keep maximum concentration, though, Ding. Got it. Well, Mark Selby throwing everything at Ding Zhongwei here, but he's standing his ground. Two great players playing some great stuff. the cushion behind the black there's the side over hit it just over hit it to the relief of Ding Zhongwei who's desperate to try and gain the initiative in this tactical exchange his turn to lay a snooker and it's pretty good as well where the black is you can't come that side he might have to come off a couple of cushions here Mark 
There's Hawkeye's view. You can see that the black is stopping him coming around the, the side of the pink. It's very clever. He's thinking, just give me a chance at this red, please. <coughs> Come off it, Mark. I thought we were friends. <laughs> Not when you're out there. Professional snooker at its finest. This has been a final to savour. It really has. He could go around this. He might leave a free ball. Especially at that pace. Oh, hang on. Hang on. Here we go. Well, well, it's not going to be four. a free ball, but Mark Selby with a mountain to climb again now. Three snookers required once more. And, of course, the miss cannot be called because snookers were already required. And that's the importance, isn't it, of having the upper hand in the safety battle. Ding managed to wrest it back from Selby after Selby missed his previous attempt to lay the snooker. And now it's Selby who needs another one. Well, this must have been, by distance, the longest frame of the match. But it's been absolutely gripping. It's not over yet. <laughs> Top cushion, lots of right hand side here. And you can misjudge these. Yeah, don't hit the black. Well played. Could have gone wrong. Forty-four the difference now. Thirty-five remaining. Three snookers for Selby to get. Well, he was disgusted with himself there because he didn't get into the white enough to get him behind the brown. He's pushed the yellow in a worse position for him. And this crowd here at the Grand Shanghai Grand Stage are playing every shot. Put the black into a better position for snookers. Ah. Well, the first real mistake from Mark Selby for some time, but he's, he's got away with that a little bit. Could have easily have left that red on. A double kiss, not quite fatal. Unlisting can manufacture a pot here. If he does, it's match over. Oh, just as well he hit the green there, by the way. I think that cue ball was bound for the pocket. A strange angle to come off that. he could do with disturbing yellow and brown here with this shot just move them in that position he's playing the other way he's looking for the snooker behind the green oh what about this oh I'll tell you what Phil at the end of this frame I've seen some of the best executions of snookers laid escapes that I've ever seen it's been a fabulous end to perhaps the most dramatic frame of the final is it to be the final frame of the final? It looks that way. It certainly looks that way now. And he's offered his hand. It's all over. And Ding Zhenghui is Shanghai Masters champion for a second time. What a final. What a standard. Two of the best players in the world giving it their all, playing near their peak. But it's Ding who's had the last word. He's beaten Mark Selby. 10-6 to be Shanghai Masters champion. goodness it was heart in the mouth time for Ding at the end of that frame the frame he needed for the title but what a performance he's produced he was solid throughout the event but today he was outstanding and he has earned his 12th ranking title brilliant stuff Mike